Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you how to use data sources and data sets in Microsoft Reporting Services. What you'll learn in this session is all about how to connect a report project to a database. We'll start by creating a shared data source which points to a location containing all of your data. We'll then show you how to create a shared data set which is uh, basically like creating a query to select the columns and rows you want to see. We'll then show you how to use a shared data set in a report to display information to the user. Finally, we'll talk about the difference between shared data sets and embedded data sets and how to create an embedded data set within a report. So let's get started. If you want to display information from a database in one of your reports, you'll need to create both a data source and a data set. A data source is really just a pointer to a location that holds all of your information while a data set is a specific collection of columns and records that are displayed in the report. You can create both shared data sources and data sets and embedded data sources and data sets. Shared versions of those two objects are created in the Solution Explorer at the level of the project and any report that you create can use the data source and data set that's shared. Embedded data sources and data sets are created at the level of each individual report and those are actually created in the, uh, the report data window which isn't visible at the moment. To start with we're going to create a shared data source which points to a database stored in a Microsoft SQL Server. In fact if I quickly switch into SQL Server Management Studio you'll be able to see that the database I'm interested in is called Movies and it's stored on a server referred to as Delvostro2 SQL 2012. So to create the shared data source which points to that database, in the Solution Explorer, right click on the shared data sources folder and choose add new data source. The dialog box that appears then allows you to give the data source a name, which I'm going to give a straightforward symbol name using DSC to represent a data source. I'm using a Microsoft SQL Server data source, although you can use things like Microsoft Access, um, Oracle databases and generic ODBC uh, data sources as well. I'm going to stick with a Microsoft SQL Server type. The next box down here allows me to specify the connection string. Now if you don't know how to type out the connection string, you can click the edit button to build it. If I edit my connection string. The server name, this is just as I showed you in SQL Server Management Studio, the name of the server containing the database. So I can quickly type this out. Once I've typed out the server name, I can then choose which database on that server I want to point to using the drop down list down here, select movies, and then click OK. It's possible to test the connection if you want to reassure yourself that it's working. Uh, but I'm reasonably confident that's going to work anyway, so let's click OK. The connection string is displayed then for you. And click OK again. And there's your shared data source. Once you've created a shared data source, you can then create a shared data set, which specifies which columns and records you will display in a report. To do that, you can right click on the shared data sets folder and choose Add New Data Set. The dialog box that appears then allows you to specify a name for the data set. Uh, I'm going to call mine uh, DTS Films. I'm going to show a list of film names and other details. You then need to select which data source your data set is going to use. Now, if you have already created one, you can simply select it from this list. It's actually pre-selected for me. Alternatively, you can use this new button to create another new shared data source. In the query box, you can, if you like, type out a full SQL query. So if you know the, the syntax of select and then the field names, for instance, film name and from TBL film, you can do things this way. Um, you can write full SQL statements in there, um, including order by clauses, where clauses, etc. You could also select from a list of store procedures that may be stored in your database. If you select the store procedure option, you can then select from a list of store procedures in the underlying database. Alternatively, if you don't want to do either of those two things, you can simply use the Query Designer, which is by far and away the easiest way to build a query if you're not familiar with the SQL syntax. If I click the Query Designer tool, I'll launch a graphical user interface which allows me to build up uh, a query. The starting point is to select a table that is going to be used in my query. 
by right clicking the background here. I can choose to add a table and the dialog box that appears then gives me a list of all of the tables stored in the underlying database. I'm going to select the, uh, the film table here and then click the add button. I close then this window. I'll see that my table of films appears in the top part of the window. The third part, part of the window, the third panel, shows me the basic SQL statement being built up. As I start to check boxes in this list to include extra fields, so I want to include the film name field, I'll see it gets added to this second panel in the window, and then it also gets added to the select list in the third panel. I can simply then carry on checking boxes to include all the fields that I want to include. I'll include three at this point, I think. I'm also going to choose to sort my fields, uh, sort my records in order alphabetical order of film name. So for the film name column, use the second panel of the window in the sort type box. Select ascending or descending. And once you've selected that, you'll add an order by clause to the, the SQL statement. It's actually quite a neat way to learn how SQL statements get built. Once you're happy, or you think you're, you think you're happy with your uh, with your results, you can try to execute or test the results of your query. If I run this query, I'll see the results spat out into the fourth panel of the window. So I'll get an idea as to what data I'm going to see in the end results. There's various other things you can do in the query designer. It's relatively straightforward to work with. Um, but at this point, I'm pretty happy with what I've done. So I'm going to choose OK. Um, I'll see my SQL statement has been written out for me in the query box. Choose OK again. And there we go. I've created a simple shared data set that's ready for use in any report. Once you've created a shared data set, you're ready to create a report which will display the information stored in it. So to do that, right-click the Reports folder in the Solution Explorer, choose Add, and then choose New Item. Choose the Report item, and then give the report a sensible name. I'm going to call mine uh, number two, uh, Shared Film List. Click the Add button, and your report will be created. Now, before you start adding uh, report items to the report, we need to make sure that this report itself points to one of our shared data sets. So to do that, we use the Report Data window at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Find the Datasets folder, right-click onto it, and choose Add Dataset. Now all we're going to do here is choose to use one of our shared datasets, and as we only have one in this uh, entire project, it's a fairly simple choice. Uh, you can give your dataset a sensible name within this report as well. I'm going to leave it as Dataset 1 at this point. Just select my shared dataset. DTS Films, and then click the OK button. As soon as I do that, I create a, a reference. You can see the little shortcut icon here. It creates a reference to my shared data set. So any items contained in that data set are available to this report. Uh, the one, uh, this could be an advantage or a disadvantage, in fact, if I change anything about this shared data set, then all of the reports that use that shared data set will inherit the same changes. To actually display that bit of information, all those three columns in the report, all I need to do is add one of three types of items. I'm going to add a table. That's the simplest way to display the information. I'm going to double click on the table item. And then I can either use the uh, field selector button that appears when I hover the mouse over various cells. If I click onto this field selector, it allows me to choose film name and then for the next column I can choose film release date and finally film runtime in minutes. Uh, we'll have a separate video that explains a lot more about how to work with tables properly. Um, but there we go, at that point we can display the information in our report. If each of the reports that you create in a project aren't going to be based on the same set of data, then it might make more sense to create embedded data sets rather than shared data sets. So in order to do that, we're going to create a new report, uh, which I'm going to do by right-clicking reports, choose Add New Item, uh, make sure I've selected Report, and I'm going to call this one number three, Embedded uh, Film List. We'll create exactly the same data set that we created as a shared data set earlier, but this time we'll make it an embedded one. So 
when I've created a new report, I actually need to do two things here. I can't just go away with creating an embedded data set because I need a data source to point it to. And the data source must belong to the report that I'm working in. So the first job is to right click the data sources folder in the report data window and choose to add a data source. Now I could here, if I wanted to, create a brand new data source in just the same way that we created our shared data source earlier on. Uh, but in our case, we're simply going to point to one of our existing data sources. So I'm going to use my shared data source reference called DSE Movies. If I select OK, I'll have a, a reference to my movies data source um, in this report. Now I can create a new data set by right clicking the data sets folder and choosing add data set. I can give my, uh, give my data set a sensible name, the DTS, um, films, I'm going to call this embedded just to distinguish it. And then rather than using a shared data set, I'm going to use an embedded one. Once I've done that, all of the options are exactly the same as for creating a shared data set. I need to choose which data source I'm pointing to. And then I can either write out my query in SQL or use a store procedure or use the query designer again. If I click the query designer button, I can then choose to add a table to my report, choose the film table and add that table to the, the list, tick the relevant fields or column names, add any sorting that I want to, and then we have the same query written. If I select OK and OK again, I've now got an embedded data set which I can again use in a table in the query. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.